Hey, listen, if you don't want to be happier, please do not subscribe to this channel. But if you're interested in more joy, check out this clip. I want to I hear, what, what does this reveal about the suffering, about the story of what he went through? Yeah, well, I was just going to, um, you know, just as you can see, first of all, there, he was crowned with thorns, but a crown that <clears throat> no medieval forger could have thought of, right? So, <clears throat> to no, begin, Take your time, take your time. Uh, wow, what a profound meditation for, for Holy Week, for, oh, for yeah. all this. Oh, man. So um, you know, it's it's a, it's woven together. It's a thorn that is really um, prevalent in northern Judea, Judea and Jerusalem, but not other places outside of the Middle East. We could tell that just by yeah. looking at the wound. What kind yeah. of thorn was that? That's right, because you can see it has a curvature um, that's uh, very you know specific to a particular kind of thorn. Uh, thorn, and of course, on the top of the, the, in order to weave it together to keep it you know in place. Place, they had to put a top on the on the on the crown, which no medieval forger would have thought of. Mm. And furthermore, it would have caused more pain because there's a bunch of nerves that go right down the mm. center of the um, uh, skull, which are pretty. You know, they're all getting you know uh, penetrated, so it's very, very, very painful. Wow. Then we know uh, also that he was whipped with a Roman flagrum. Um, that mm. No medieval forger would have thought that you know they had a single thonged whip, whereas the Romans had three thongs, and there were little lead dumbbells, uh, you know, little teeny lead dumbbells on the end of them. So when they're he's being whipped from the right and from the left. Mm. So there's two guys doing this, and of course when it goes, it wraps around his side, and the dumbbells go into his uh, this his side. And then it tears his flesh off when they take the whip back. Oh. Well, this is happening to him like, you know, almost 200 times. And you look at that, the loss of blood, not to mention the pain, mm -hmm. would have been excruciating. And it would have been unthinkable for the Romans really to do it um, this way, except in the case of Jesus, where we are... Um, uh, given the explanation, Pontius Pilate wants to make him look like a train wreck so that, you know, people will say, okay, he's been punished, mm. no need to kill him. You know, this is not a capital offense. Uh, he, he suffered as much as anybody deserves for calling himself, um, you know, uh, God's son and blaspheming. And of course, mm. uh, you look at you know the charge of blasphemy. It's completely unique in Ju in Jewish and Roman juridical proceedings. Mm. Only in Jesus's case was the charge of blasphemy leveled against him. Mm. And by the way, the crown of thorns. The only reason that um, I mean, we only have one. Uh, crucifixion, the whole of history we know of that where a person was crowned with thorns. But it makes sense in Jesus's case, King of the Jews, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. It makes sense in the narrative. Then I, that spear wound that I just talked about. I mean, where are you going to get blood and water and evidence of blood and water coming out of a wound? It had to actually that spear had to go in at that thirty degree angle, which it did, and it go have to go through the pleural edema mm. uh, um, uh, into the a pleural sac, but it had to go through the uh, pericardial sac first. It's going to nick the heart, causing mm. blood, go into the pleural edema sac, and so the water will flow. First the blood will come, then the uh, pleural edema fluid, the transparent fluid. And it's perfectly will, placed to have done that, it's it, it, perfect, as far as the image is concerned. Right between the fifth and sixth rib at the right angle to do precisely that. That's, of course, you know, we don't have crucifixions no. where the Romans are putting guys out of their misery. The whole point was to keep them crucified for two days. Right. And of course, in Jesus' case, he'd lost so much blood. And then, you know, the un inexplicable spear wound, which is so clearly present. And then you can see that he carried his own, um, uh, you know, cross beam on his shoulders because he's got a big, huge lump and a disc located shoulder. And so you can see by the, the scars on his knees mm. that what happened was the man was carrying this cross mm. beam and then he trips mm. and he goes right down on his knees. They capture all this in the image. From the image, absolutely. Wow. You can see it very clearly because of the angle. You can see that the beam went up and then bam! 
bam, it hits his shoulder so hard that it not only dislocates his shoulder, but it jerks his neck around to the right. Mm -hmm. And then he becomes partially paralyzed on the upper right side. But you can see it because his eye is absorbed into the orbit, the right orbit, right? And it goes into a very abnormal, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, depression in the right orbit. So his eye got sucked in and made him uh, paralyzed, which of course would uh, obviously increase the pain of the crucifixion. Mm. And then you can, you know, the nail wounds are going to have to go into this, uh, what's called the thenar furrow mm. here. And it goes out this end, this little V that you can feel mm. at the back of your wrist. So in the palm and out the wrist. In the palm and out the wrist, you know, and it about what, you know, about a 15 degree angle or so, mm. so that it comes out right here, right It's worse than just through the wrist, I think. Right. You know, you got and all these nerves. Because it hits all the palm. nerves on the way out, but fastens on to this little V-shaped bone, which of course holds the hands to the cross. So you look at what this poor man went through, the excruciating whipping. I mean, I mean, he had to lose. His flesh was just torn off his body. I mean, that's all there is to it. I mean, it's like a shark attack, you know, uh, where, you know, it's just, it's just torn to pieces mm. by like a beast. And, and then finally, of course, you know, when he gets to the cross and the nailing and having to pull himself up on the cross, I mean, the story, all the blood wounds are in place. And what's so interesting is that face cloth of Oviedo that goes back to 616 AD, that has 120 points of congruence in those irregular blood stains as the face of the, of the man on oh, the Shroud on. of Turin. Wow. 120 points of congruence. Those two cloths had to touch the same face. You know, it almost makes you think this stuff's real. <laughs> <laughs> Very real. And by the way, means also the cloth couldn't have been or originated in me medieval times because the provenance of the face cloth of Oviedo is definitively 616 AD. And you can prove that through testimony after testimony, especially, mm. you know, sources like Isidore Seville and people, pilgrims visiting the face cloth in the cathedral of Oviedo again and again. That's where it was placed in 700 AD. Well, if you wow. look at that, and the two claws touch the same face, guess what? The shroud has to go back to 616 or before. Or you're going to say, this is the most remarkable coincidence that's ever oh, happened, man, no. and there's not even an image on the face cloth of Oviedo. I don't think so. I, I love yeah. uh, Thank you. I mean, I, I, it, there's just so, I could go on for two hours on this. Go to magiscenter.com and actually dive into this for the next two hours. Right now. <laughs> Push the kids aside. They'll be fine. Put them in front of SpongeBob. But, <laughs> Actually, no, bring them with you to magiccenter.com. Yeah, yeah. Dive into this mystery. I just love yeah. how this captures, it's, yeah. his eyes aren't even open yet. Yeah. You know, it captures the death, it tells the story of his death and the resurrection in one image. Yeah. The closed eyes, the yeah. suffering, the testament to what he went through out of love for us. Yeah, absolutely. Which I, I thank God I made it through all you were saying without crying. Yeah. But, and, the, and then that to have that body, that dead body, mm -hmm. have half a million Mm -hmm. uh, spotlights come out of it in a like a nanosecond. <laughs> that's spotlights, searchlights. Searchlights, searchlights. Search right. This is yeah, that's a whole lot of light in it. That's energy. incredible. Uh, 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 Saint Paul tells us in Romans uh, that God proved His love for us in this: that while we were sinners, He died for us. He died for you. There is a God. This is all real. Mm -hmm. There is a God. He created you for a purpose that's good. When you wanted from His plan, He could have redeemed you some other way. He chose to do it this way. To show you how much he loves you. Next time you're wondering, can I make it past that sin? I want you to remember the message of the cross. Remember the message of the mass. Same message, body of Christ. Do I matter? Body of Christ. Is anybody thinking about me? Body of Christ. Does my pain have purpose? Body of Christ. What's my net worth? Mm -hmm. Body of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the answer to all the longings and questions in our hearts. Mm -hmm. God loved you so much that he died for you. And that's not the end of the story. He rose from the dead which makes that death and all our deaths and all our pains in life profoundly beautiful. God love you. God love you, Father. Dude, wasn't that amazing? I don't want you to miss this great stuff. Go over to the subscribe button and bring all your friends. Have a praise and worship session around that subscribe button. Light a fire near it. Toast marshmallows and offer a marshmallow to the subscribe button. Whatever you have to do, 
You can even just click subscribe, and you'll never miss this great content again. Share it with everybody you know. We'll see you in the next video.